Hi there. Welcome back to the Cult of Eve ASMR channel. Today I have a, a unique offering for you. One that I hope will uh, bring you uh, some happiness and some peace and maybe a, a good deal of nostalgia. What I have here is the end poem from the game Minecraft. This poem was written by Julian Goh, who is a poet and musician from Ireland, and he has a great number of other works, but perhaps the thing he is most famous for is writing the end poem from Minecraft which is an unusual event that happens after you, as the name implies, get to the end of the game. I remember as a teenager, when I first, uh, when I first won in Minecraft, being very baffled by the end poem, because, I mean, Minecraft is a game that I mean, for the entire rest of it, is a game that is not necessarily one that takes itself seriously. It's a game that's, you know, that's played by children. Um, there's a good deal of, you know, memes and uh, cringeworthiness and all sorts of things that come from Minecraft. But this poem that plays for about, I think, ten minutes or so, at the end of the game, or rather after you've met the victory condition, is very philosophical. Um, it's, it's really something that makes you think about, you know, think about life and your place in the world and and now, of course, this poem, which um, will be familiar to, to many, many people, is in the public domain, uh, because the author, Julian Goh, um, if you were, you know, if you were active on the internet, on Twitter and such, about a year ago, I think it was in November of 2022, uh, he officially entered the end poem into the public domain uh, due to disagreements that he had with uh, with Mo Yang, which is the development studio for Minecraft, and of course uh, the conflict and controversy with the original creator of Minecraft, uh, Notch, who is um, at this point a bit of an infamous figure. So. He entered the end poem into the public domain and said anybody can do whatever they want with it. They can create products, they can read it in like audiobooks or whatever, they can do anything they want with it. So I thought this would be a nice video, probably a little shorter on the shorter side. Um, and just introduce you guys to this really interesting piece of work. Let's get into it. I see the player you mean. The viewer. Yes, take care. It has reached a higher level now. It can read our thoughts. That doesn't matter. It thinks we are part of the game. I like this player. It played well. It did not give up. It is reading our thoughts as though they were words on a screen. That is how it chooses to imagine many things, when it is deep in the dream of a game. Words make a wonderful interface, very flexible and less terrifying than staring at the reality behind the screen. They used to hear voices, before players could read, back in the days when those who did not play called the players witches and warlocks, and played
players dreamed they flew through the air on sticks powered by demons. What did this player dream? This player dreamed of sunlight and trees, of fire and water. It dreamed it created, and it dreamed it destroyed. It dreamed it hunted and was hunted. It dreamed of shelter. <sighs> the original interface, a million years old, but what true structure did this player create in the reality behind the screen? It worked with a million others to sculpt a true world in a fold of the and created for in It cannot read that thought. No, it has not achieved the highest level. That it must achieve in the long dream of life not the short dream of a game. Does it know that we love it? That the universe is kind? Sometimes, with the noise of its thoughts, it hears the universe, yes. But there are times it is sad in the long dream. It creates worlds that have no summer, and it shivers under a black sun, and it takes its sad creation for reality. To cure it of sorrow would destroy it. The sorrow is part of its own private task. We cannot interfere. Sometimes when they are deep in dreams, I want to tell them they are building true worlds in reality. Sometimes I want to tell them of their importance to Sometimes, when they have not made a true connection in a while, I want to help them to speak the word they fear. It reads our thoughts. Sometimes I do not care. Sometimes I wish to tell them this world you take for truth is merely you. And I wish to tell them that they are you in the whole. They see so little of reality in their long dream. And yet they play the game. But it would be so easy to tell them. Too strong for this dream. To tell them how to live is to prevent them living. I will not tell the player how to live. The player is growing restless. I will tell the player a story, but not the truth. No, a story that contains the truth safely in a cage of words not the naked truth that can burn over any distance. Give it a body again. Yes, player. Use its name. The viewer, player of games. Good. Take a breath now. Take another. Feel air in your lungs. Let your limbs return. Yes. Move your fingers. Have a body again under gravity in air. Respawn in the long dream. There you are. Your body touching the universe again at every point, as though you were separate things. As though we were separate things. Who are we? Once we were called the spirit of the mountain. Father, sun, mother, moon. Ancestral spirits. Animal spirits. Jin, ghosts, the green man, then gods, demons, angels, poltergeists, aliens, extraterrestrials, leptons, quarks. The words change. We do not change. We are the universe. We are everything you think isn't you. You are looking at us now through your skin and your eyes. And why does the universe touch your skin and throw light on you? To see you, player. To know you. To be known. I shall tell you a story. Once upon a time, there was a player. The player was you, the viewer. Sometimes it thought itself human on the thin crust of a spinning globe of molten rock. The ball of molten rock 
circled a ball of blazing grass that was 330,000 times more massive than it. They were so far apart that the light took eight minutes to cross the gap. The light was information from a star. Sometimes the player dreamed it was a miner, on the surface of a world that was flat and infinite. The sun was a square of white. The days were short, there was much to do, and death was a temporary inconvenience. Sometimes the player dreamed it was lost in a story. Sometimes the player dreamed it was other things in other places. Sometimes these dreams were disturbing, sometimes very beautiful indeed. Sometimes. The player woke from one dream into another, then woke from that into a third. Sometimes. Atoms of the player were scattered in the grass, in the rivers, in the air, in the ground. A woman gathered the atoms. She drank and ate and inhaled, and the woman assembled the player in her body. And the player awoke from the warm, dark world of its mother's body into the long dream. And the player was a new story, never told before written in letters of DNA. And the player was a new program, never run before, generated by a source code a billion years old. And the player was a new human, never alive before, made from nothing but milk and love. You are the player, the story, the program, the human, made from nothing. Let's go further back. The seven billion 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 atoms of the player's body were created long before this game in the heart of a star. So the player too is information from a star. And the player moves through a story, which is a forest of information planted by a name called Julian on the flat infinite world created by that exists inside a small private world created by the player, who inhabits a universe created by... Shh. Sometimes, the player created a small private world that was soft and warm and simple, sometimes hard and cold and complicated. Sometimes it built a model of the universe in its head, flecks of energy moving through vast empty spaces. Sometimes it called those flecks electrons and protons. Sometimes it called them planets and stars. Sometimes it believed it was in a universe that was made of energy, that was made of offs and ons, zeros and ones, lines of code. Sometimes it believed it was playing a game. Sometimes it believed it was reading words. player reading words. Sometimes the player read lines of code on a screen, decoded them into words, decoded words into meaning, decoded meaning into feelings, emotions, theories, ideas, and the player started to breathe faster and deeper and realize it was alive. It was alive. Those thousand deaths had not been real. The player was alive. You, you, you are alive. And sometimes the player believed the universe had spoken to it through the sunlight that came through the shuffling leaves of the summer trees. And sometimes the player believed the universe had spoken to it through the light that fell from the crisp night sky of winter, where a fleck of light in the corner of the player's eye might be a star a million times as massive as the sun. 
boiling its planets to plasma in order to be visible for a moment to the player. Walking home at the far side of the universe, suddenly smelling food, almost at the familiar door, about to dream again. And sometimes the player believed the universe had spoken to it through the zeros and ones, through the electricity of the world, through the scrolling words on a screen at the end of a dream. And the universe said, you have played the game well. And the universe said, everything you need is within you. And the universe said, you are stronger than you know. And the universe said, you are the daylight. And the universe said, you are the night. And the universe said, the darkness you fight is within you. And the universe said, the light you seek is within you. And the universe said, separate from every other thing. And the universe said, you are the universe, tasting itself, talking to itself, reading its own code. And the universe said, I love you, because you are love. And the game was over, and the player woke up from the dream. And the player began a new dream. And the player dreamed again, dreamed better, and the player was the universe. Hope you enjoyed that. I hope that uh, brought you some peace, or at the very least, um, helped you to sleep or relax. And I hope that you have a good rest of your day, or a good rest of your night. you deserve good things. I'll see you next time.